Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, relatively, relatively good day. Good, nothing crazy. That's good. You got through, and then tomorrow's Friday. Woohoo! Um, well, thank you for joining me today um, for this uh, linguistical lesson. Today, do you know what we are talking about? Anton, do you know what we are talking about today? I have no idea. <laughs> Just came on in. I like it. I like your style. Well, today we are doing um, some global reading, and I call this reading around the globe because we'll read about different um, parts of the world. Um, so today, reading, all right? And we'll do a little bit of discussion. So let me share my PowerPoint with you. Um, please let me know when you can see it on your screen. I can see. Perfect. Okay. All right. So background appropriate. We have the world behind us. Let's see what we're going to talk about first. Okay. Will you please read the first question? Do you like hiking? Yeah. So basic discuss discussion question. Do you enjoy it? Uh, yes, I enjoy it. It's uh, one of my hobbies. Oh, that's great. Me too. What? Uh, where do you go hiking? Well, I actually my hometown uh, placed in mountains, so it's a uh, so southwestern south side mountains. That's great. And is, is that um, a hobby that you do every year or every day or every month? How often do you like to go hiking? Uh, at, least, uh, at least three times uh, every summer. Fantastic. Cool. All right. Um, well, if I could go hiking, I'd go every day. I love it so much. But yeah, I uh, don't get to go quite as often um, now being back in the States. But in Chile, every weekend for sure. Very accessible places to hike. Okay, next, next question. Have you ever traveled outside your home country? Where did you go? What do you think? Uh, um, I actually have uh, more more than one <laughs> home country. So, oh, okay. What are your uh, two home countries? Yeah, but I never never been outside uh, of that home countries. <laughs> okay, what are your two home countries, and and can you explain how you have two? Um, I was born in uh, Kazakhstan, and uh, I I spent my my childhood in Kazakhstan. And uh, when the so Soviet Union fell apart, I uh, moved moved to 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 Siberia to the Russian Federation, and uh, so I. I just uh, have have relatives in either country, and uh, it's it's a common situation. And uh, okay, very uh, cool. So you're in Siberia now. Yeah. Very cool. Um, oh well, that's nice that you you um, have two home countries uh, or two countries that you get to call home. So that's very cool. Um, and you've traveled between the two. So that's still, you get to have two home countries and you get to travel. So that's very cool. Um, so where do you do your hiking? Do you do that in Siberia or do you do that in Kazakhstan? Uh, in Siberia, because uh, Kazakhstan uh, not, uh, mm -hmm. not so appropriate for hiking. Might might be uh, on least uh, Eastern Kazakhstan. Mm. But I never did it. Okay. 
Cool. Where is one place in the world that you would like to go to? Well, I I plan to to travel to travel through Europe, so some some countries in Europe and uh, to end my journey in in Portugal. Ah, very nice. I would love to go to Portugal. I have never been to um, Portugal before, so that sounds like a really fun trip. Um, what about uh, the last question? Could you please read the last discussion question? What is your favorite thing about Evelyn? All right, so I know you've only traveled between those two countries, but you have traveled. Um, and I'm sure you've traveled within those countries. Um, what do you like about it? What's your favorite thing? To, I, I don't know, to, to meet new people, to... Yeah, it's a great one. Yeah, to, to, I don't know. <laughs> just, um, to, just change the environment. Yeah, I agree. I like that. I like the change just to um, feel like you're away and you get to meet. And um, one of my favorite things about traveling too is getting to meet new people. I think that's so exciting. Even if you never see them again, it's, it's exciting to just meet other travelers. So very cool. All right. Well, now that we've talked about traveling, let's get started traveling through our reading. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so first, I have some words here. Um, definitions and part of speech. So um, these are some words in the reading that I thought might be uh, a little difficult. Um, maybe not for you, but just new for any uh, non-native English speakers um, just starting out. Um, let's go through them and see if we can label the part of speech. And then we'll go back and see if we can actually define them before the reading. So please uh, read through the words, and then we'll come back and label the parts of speech. OK. Uh, abandon area block uh, conquer flat hidden hike overgrown. Big restore site ter terrace tightly vegetation. Excellent. This word is pronounced conquer. Conquer. Excellent. Um, generally, um, Q U is how you pronounced it. It's like qua, like quit or quite. But in this one, um, a lot of native English speakers kind of just sounded out like a C. So a hard C. Conquer. OK. OK. Um, and then this one, could you repeat? Uh, vegetation. Good. Try and say the V pronunciation a little bit stronger instead of, uh, it sounds like you're saying more of a W. V, vegetation. Repeat. Vegetation. Excellent. There you go. Awesome. Okay. So let's start with abandon. Is this a noun, adjective, verb, adverb? What is this? Uh, usually it's used as an, an adjective. Okay. Could you give me an example? Uh, abandoned house. Okay. Abandoned In that house. case, if it were an adjective, it would be like this. Abandoned house. So oh. this one is actually, can you guess again? No. <laughs> yeah, I just take a guess. Uh, 
Well, I I, I doubt uh, if it uh, could, could be used to, as a noun. Maybe. Uh, if... Good guess, but a, a noun would be this. Abandonment. Okay. okay. So, so it's actually, third time's the charm, it's a verb. So she abandons me or we abandon her. <laughs> what do you think? Do you know what this means? Uh, to to leave some place or, and uh, Yeah, exactly. To leave a place or to leave it without any people or any items. Yeah. Awesome. All right. The next one, area. Uh, area. Uh, well, it's it's a noun. And, uh, Good. And some, some place. Some. Say that again. Uh, it, it defines some place. Some. Uh, with, Good. Uh, yeah. Did you want to add to that? Sorry, I can't tell if you were done speaking or not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just. Uh, I, I just not sure about. Uh, I, I always uh, thought about that uh, word as. Uh, uh, that area it's something with uh, with borders good I mean, good yeah like a piece I mean, of not land this place, but, but it has some borders good yeah exactly you're exactly right awesome job um, and I like when you uh, you speak up a little bit louder and a little bit clearer I think sometimes you are not sure of the answer and you mumble but have conviction with your answer so say it very strongly and clearly so that we can both understand each other okay 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 awesome all right block what part of speech is block well it's it can be either noun or um, or verb Excellent. Yeah, we can block um, a punch if someone's coming at us as a verb, or we can carry a block, a chunk of a uh, piece of material or something like that. Awesome. Okay, conquer. Adjective, verb, adverb, preposition, noun. I'm not sure in about that word. I, I, I always... Uh... Um, I actually when I see that word, I <laughs> I thought about uh, the word ca conquest. Um, mm hmm Yes, conquest is a noun. Yeah. So what do you think this one is? Well, I, I suppose this is a, a verb. Good. Yeah, he conquered the city of Spain, for example or this uh, city in Spain. Good. All right, um, the next one is flat. Uh, flat. Well, it's uh, <laughs> it's a noun, but uh, I, I'm not sure about the, the meaning in that context. Uh, I usually use it uh, like, uh, like an apartment. <laughs> Good, yeah, so in that case, it's a noun. Can you think of another? We're not talking about a, a flat that we live in in this article. We're actually talking about something else. Can you take a guess? Well, in that context, I guess it's um, some, uh, some flat, flat location, maybe. Good. So is this, what part of speech is this? Noun. Mm, 
close. You said it's like a flat location. So flat oh, is uh, describing location. Adjective. What's good? Yeah, it's an adjective. Um, awesome. So it's it usually modifies nouns. Good. Um, okay, hidden. What do you think of hidden? It's uh, it's also an adjective. Okay, could you give me an example? And maybe a well, sentence or a phrase. Uh, well, for example, uh, well, when I uh, when I was hiking in mountain last summer, I uh, I found a hidden waterfall. Good, excellent. Um, perfect example, this word can be an adjective, and it's very common that it's an adjective. But, dun, 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 it is actually not an adjective in the reading. What else do you think it could be? Well, it, uh, <laughs> it could be a, a form of a verb. Good. What do you mean formal? Uh, the form of a verb, uh, it's a, uh, like a well, past, past perfect, but... Uh, per yeah, good job. The uh, past participle. Oh, sorry. I thought you said formal instead of form of. Okay, I see. Um, yeah, you're exactly right. So, for example, um, I have hidden uh, the toy under the bed. So, in that case, it's the participle of the verb to hide. Excellent job. Wow, you're on a roll with these. Good job. All right. What about hike? What part of speech is hike? It's verb... Good. It's a verb or a noun, but in this case, it's actually a verb. Good. Um, what do you think about overgrown? Uh, the same as hidden. Good. Yeah, it could be an adjective or a verb. Excellent. Um, what about peak? The peak of a mountain. Well, uh, this uh, five words starts from capital letters, so <laughs> I suppose it's it's all nouns. <laughs> Actually, I have all of them. Oh, it looks like overgrown didn't get capitalized. Um, as uh, uppercase, just because it's uh, it's how it's stored into the um, PowerPoint. Um, so it has nothing to do with the part of speech. So, okay. but if I say the peak of a mountain, it's what part mountain. of speech is that? Yeah, excellent. Yeah, the tippy top of the mountain. Good. What about restore? Uh, well, I usually use that word as a verb, so I guess it's good. Uh, yeah, excellent. To restore something or bring it back to its original condition. Good. What about sight? It's a noun. Good. Yeah. What is a sight? Mm -hmm. It's a, a part of uh, something bigger. Specifically, what can it be? Uh, Specifically, uh, talking about uh, the directions. Good direction or a place. Or a place, yeah. Yeah, good. All right, we have three more. What about terrace? You're doing such a great job. Terrace, uh, well, uh, in my in my native language, it would be a noun. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Yep. And then tightly? 
tightly. Uh, I suppose that's an uh, adjective. Okay, could you use it as a in a sentence? <laughs> no. Uh, Are I you don't aware have of my active uh, vocabulary? Okay, okay. Um, this word is actually an adverb. The adjective is, if we look at it, tight. So maybe oh. these pants are too tight, meaning they're too small or they're wrapped around something too much. Um, so we could also say tightly. This is an adverb to modify a verb. So they were tightly hanging on her waist. Um, so when we, if we were to squeeze something or hold something, you can hold it very loosely. And then we could hold it very tightly, which means we're grasping it very, uh, very hard. Oh, All right, and the last one is vegetation. I remember, I remember. Good, I good. I usually use that word as uh, when I speak about my schedule. <laughs> oh yes, tight schedule is another good way to describe it. Good. Yeah. Um, what about vegetation? Last one, part of speech. Uh, no. Good. Yeah. We usually words with T I O N at the end are nouns. Excellent. All right, now that we've become a little bit more familiar with these words, let's go ahead and practice our reading. Excellent job on those uh, vocab words. Okay, we're reading about Machu Picchu. We are going to Peru. Why don't you go ahead and please read this slide? Machu Picchu is on a mountain peak in the Andes uh, mountains in Peru. It was built uh, almost 600 years ago by the in Incas. Then. In Incas. In the, the Inca people did not live there very long. They uh, abandoned the site around uh, 1550. <laughs> oh, <laughs> when it, when the, when the Sp Spanish arrived in the area, the Spanish conquered, conquered the, the Incas by they never discovered, but, but they never discovered Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu lay hidden in in the mountains for hundreds of years. Uh, an American, Hiram he, he, Binham, Binham discovered, uh, discovered it in 1911. And that at that time it was overgrown with, with, with vegetation. Good. Continue on to the next slide. The buildings in Machu Picchu are built, uh, are built of stone. The blocks of stone were cut to fit together tightly and no mortar was needed to hold the stones in place. The side of the mountain were made into flat terraces. The flat, the flat land could then be used for growing food. Llamas and al al alpacas lived there too. These, uh, these are these are animals found in South America. Excellent job, good reading. I know that's a lot to get there because you're the because you're the only one in class. But thank you for reading both of those slides. Um, there's one more slide, but before we get to it, let me just give you a little bit of feedback on the pronunciation. Um, let's see. 
Um, so for dates, I think you laughed a minute because I think you knew uh, what to do. What do we do for dates? How do we pronounce them? Do we say 1,550? 1,550. <laughs> I just uh, didn't follow the... Uh, didn't follow the... <laughs> the meaning of that sentence so i just uh, okay was confused mm -hmm. 15 50. good yeah excellent so they abandoned the site which means they left the area um around the year 1550 because the spanish had arrived um good okay and then remember how we pronounce this word conquered Remember, we don't want to do the, the normal Q-U, like quite, quit. We want to actually say it like a hard C. So, conquered. Conquered. Good, yeah, not conquered. Conquered, excellent. Um, also, great pronunciation, but intonation. This word, could you please say? Mountains. Good, better. When you're reading, you put the emphasis on the tens, but we want to put the emphasis on the first syllable. Mountains. Try that. Yeah. Mountains. Good. And the same with um, this other. Oh, come on. Uh, the I... same with. There was another word in here. I don't know what it was. Oh, I think it was this. Could you please read that word? T terraces. Good. Instead of terraces, we just want to do terraces. T terraces. Good. Yeah. yeah, so the emphasis is on the first syllable. Good. Excellent. Um, and then these words are similar. We talked about the Incas or the Inca people. Uh, these guys right here, can you see that? But yeah. on the next slide, um, we have a similar ending, that's C-A in the word alpacas. Can you say alpacas? <laughs> alpacas. Good. I think you said alpacs, and we're ta taking out the A, so excellent job with that. All right, let's continue reading, um, and then we'll go over kind of what this means. All right, there you go. Uh, Manchu picture is no longer ever growing with vegetation. The walls, temples, and other buildings have been restored. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a popular tourist attraction. Many people visit it. There about one, there, there about one million visitors each year. You you can hike the in Inca Trail through the mountains to Manchu Ma, Picchu. Okay. The 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 walk is forty three kilometers long and uh, it takes about four days if you don't want to hike you can take a train to the to, to the nearest town uh, agulas uh, calientes uh, agulas calientes from uh, from three from three it, <laughs> From there, from good, there, good, it is a third bus right to, to match a picture. Good, excellent, good job reading. Um, so I know these words are difficult. That's because they're not English words; they're Spanish words, um, and it just means it's the hot springs there. So calientes means hot, and aguas means water. Um, so yes, those are not English words. Um, great job reading. So. Um, just one bit of feedback with these V words, try and make them V, 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 they, your mouth, um, starts together and ends, uh, open. 
okay oh, I, we have I to know, i know what's what the problem it's it's no we it's uh i sound because uh, i always kind of confused with um, i always uh, pronounce i sound as e and uh, because of that it became uh, more more softer i see <laughs> okay well you did really well with vegetation could you try mm. saying this word again uh with it almost you're pronouncing it like a w like like this with it <laughs> Let's try v v. Can you just do Bis that sound? V. Can you try just the sound v v? V. Good. Yeah, we kind of want that. Um, it kind of feels. Uh, we feel the vibration when we do v v. Right. We can feel it in our in our mouth and our throat. Um, what about visitors? Could you try that one? Visitors visitors close how about try just the the um, visitors good just try the sound v v v v v v good good excellent now visitors visitors better better i still have that w a little bit what about this word What is that word? Uh, which one? This one that I, I just typed at the bottom. You see it? I'm sorry, I didn't see any highlighted words. Oh, okay, can you see it now? No. At, the bo at the bottom? Oh, no, <laughs> now I see it. Uh, love. Good. Say that a little bit slower and again, and feel the V on your on the back of your throat. Love. Love. Good. Now try visitor. Visitor. Better, better. Visitor. That's your homework. It's to practice that V sound. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Awesome job reading. So, what is this story about? About Machu Picchu. Yeah, <laughs> good. Machu Picchu. Um, what did you learn about Machu Picchu today? Uh, this was abandoned since uh, 1550. And it was discovered uh, in 1911. Excellent, yeah. Who discovered it? H Hiram B. <laughs> I can't read it. H Hiram, H Hiram B. B. Bingham. Good, yeah, exactly. Um, and when he found it, did it look like uh, what it does now? It was often growing with the vegetation. Yeah, and what does it look like now? Now, now it, uh, it, it erases as clean by clip. Uh, So say that again. Uh, now, now the races is uh, uh, clean and uh, and it j just uh, without vegetation. Good. Yeah. Exactly. It's not overgrown anymore. They've cleaned it up, and we can see in this picture. Um, uh, if the whole actually, site is visible. May I ask something? Yeah. Uh, in in my native language, uh, we have an idiom about uh, about that. Uh, we would say that it's uh, it's a na naked stone. 
Naked stone, yeah. meaning that it's clean? Yeah, it's clean it's, and it's uh, without uh, vegetation. So. Oh, okay. Without um, useless, uh, without useless uh, plants on it. Okay, well, I don't Do think we have that. I like that, um, but I don't think we have that in English, naked stone. We do have something, it's a little bit different. It doesn't mean without vegetation, it means starting new. Um, and it's an idiom that's called clean slate. I'll write it in the chat for you. Okay, clean and this, slate. If you think about a clean piece of slate, um, it's fresh, right? Maybe it's freshly cut or freshly sanded, so it's, um, you know, no bumps or bruises on it. It's very smooth. Um, and this means to have a new beginning, clean slate. So, for example, if you got into an argument with your best friend and you suggested, why don't we start fresh, clean slate? That would be appropriate to mean let's let's start again and be on good terms. But that's the only thing I can think of that would be close to naked stone. Okay. But okay. Uh, cool. Good to know. Good to know. Um, okay. So, what did you did you like this story? Did you learn something new that you didn't know before? Uh. I I don't remember exactly, but uh, it seems I I saw a documentation about this place. Oh, okay. Um, like a movie? A documentary, or I'm sorry, documentary movie. Oh, good, cool. Okay. Um, so you did learn something new today. I hope then, even though you saw the documentary, um, is this a place that maybe you would want to go one day to do some hiking? Well, actually, South so, so America, it's a very interesting place to, to, to travel and maybe... Maybe, maybe, maybe well, after all your European travels, huh? After, <laughs> or maybe when, when I will be old rich uh, guy. <laughs> Say, One day you'll get I there. The, the trip, so. Yes, yes, I'm sure it's expensive. Um, but yeah, this is one of the seven wonders of the world, so it could be could be a fun trip. Okay, let's go over those vocabulary words that we uh, saw in this one more time. Oops. Okay, will you please read the um, word and the definitions? Abandon verb to to leave behind with no plan to return desert. Good. Continue. Area, area which is known first um, a region a region of the country or city or a part of a building of block which is now uh, a solid piece of hard material with flat sides good conquer verb try that one one more time <laughs> Conquer. Remember, we we don't want to say the Q U. How do we pronounce it? Oh, I'm sorry. Conquer. Excellent. Conquer. Good. Self correction. Awesome job. You got it. All right. Keep going. <laughs> to, to get overcome by force. Good. Good. Excellent. See, you got it. <laughs> All right, continue. You're doing a great job. Flat, which is adjective, smooth, smooth and 
and level. Okay. Uh, strange definition. Uh, hidden which is verb uh, par, past par, 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 participle par, past participle of the verb to hide something something is hidden if it is in a place where you can't see it good hike which is verb to take a long walk in the country for fun or exercise good okay let's continue I'm a growing, which is verb past past participle of uh, our grow to grow over with a thick cover of leaves. Good. That word you can pronounce thick. Thick. Good. Thick. Excellent. Thick. Okay. Um. Thick noun. The highest part of a mountain, uh, or the or the highest part of anything. Uh, okay. Priest or verb to bring something back to an earlier or normal condition. Good. Site, which is now a place for a town, city, building, or event. The race, which is now first a flat surf, uh, a flat surface covered with with brick or concrete outside of a building, and second uh, a flat raised section, raised section of ground. Good. Try the word again. Terrace. Terrace. Good. Yeah, we want to put the emphasis on the first syllable, terrace. Yeah, I know it's it's my problem. <laughs> no, you're doing great. That's why we're here. We're here to practice. In my That's language, easy. emphasis usually uh, vice versa. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, so it's probably very difficult to see that. Um, but you're doing great. All right, continue. T tightly adverb. Uh, in a firm, close, or secure way. And vegetation, which is known plants or plant life in a particular place. Excellent, excellent. So, are all these words familiar to you or are some of them new to you? Um, well, I know, know uh, <laughs> that we used before uh, our growing oh good okay um so let's take a look at that in the sentence so, so as you see here it's um when things grow over other things um it just means that the plants haven't or the leaves haven't been cut in a long time okay let's see if we can find it oh here we go Machu Picchu is no longer overgrown with vegetation. So what does this mean? It's no longer covered by <laughs> by plants. Yeah, good. You can actually you can actually see the ruins, the walls, the temples, the buildings, right? It's not just all plants. So imagine imagine walking around in Peru and being um Hiram Bingham or this this American that discovered it and just seeing a bunch of plants with some weird stones or weird buildings underneath and then realizing that you were in Machu Picchu you were in um, one of the greatest ruin now one of the greatest ruins in the world um, and a civilization of people had lived on that actual mountain uh, what do you think you'd be feeling? <laughs> uh, 
uh, actually, actually, the stories about uh, ancient civilization <laughs> that do not touch me at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what what do you what kind of emotion do you think you'd be feeling? Uh, indifference. Indifference, really? You wouldn't care at all? Mm, well, uh, <laughs> I I would love to to see how they lived, but uh, I don't see a pleasure of watch any pleasure of watching uh, <laughs> ruins. Okay, um, you must not be into history then. <laughs> so maybe this isn't a good place yes. for you to visit. Um, because that's all it is. It is ruins. But I don't think that it's the actual ruins that are that interesting for me. I think it's actually um, how you think about you're on the top, you're on the top of a mountain and how these people built a civilization for themselves um, so long ago without the tools and without the technology that we have today. And they built so much, and they how, where did they get these rocks from? You know, they had to somebody had to bring them up the mountain, right? So it's kind of uh, to me unbelievable to think that people had built this city so long ago um, on the top of a mountain uh, in Peru, and I think that's incredible. But I don't know. I would if I found it, if I discovered it, I would be. I would be in shock and I would probably be scared that I was in somebody's backyard. Um, but yeah, I would be in shock finding a whole life and civilization of people that the world had never known about. Um, but hey, not for everybody. Maybe you'd find it and just keep walking. <laughs> um, and that's okay too. Um, so on this uh, slide, I, it also says, what tourist attractions have you been to? Um, so you are interested in traveling. What types of places, for example, in Europe? Um, I know you haven't been to all the places you want to go to, but what are some places that you do want to go to? Are there certain, um, maybe not ruins, but um, maybe a museum or certain buildings or... Uh, markets or something like that that you are interested in? Uh, well, first place, uh, it's a small country in the Central Europe. Uh, it's uh, maybe you know it's Slovenia. Uh, they, uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, they have very very similar language to to, to Russian and okay very interesting culture I think uh, I, uh, by by culture I mean uh, um, things like relationships be, uh, mm -hmm. inside society and uh, and uh, in, in, specific way to to, to live uh, um, well uh, I, I, I don't I assume um, architecture or food or things like that <laughs> I'm more interested in people and um, the second place uh, uh, just, uh, just interesting. Uh, uh, what's it's uh, uh, Denmark in the northern part of just, just, just out of interest. Uh, want to, to to see what's what's in that part of Europe, uh, and uh, I want to spend some of my 
my life in in Portugal and uh, I uh, actually one of my friends live in Lisbon in, <laughs> in Portugal and uh, he, he loves people uh, ocean and uh, climate and seems like that about that country mm -hmm, climate and, and, and la la language also I, I started learning Portuguese uh, great ago. that's great uh, interesting language interesting melody of uh, and uh, interesting people <laughs> Definitely. Okay. So you've got some places on your list more for the people, the people and the food than the actual sites. And I think that's really cool. I, um, I like to see it all when I travel, but I definitely agree that I would rather if I had to choose, um, get to know the people and get and eat the yummy food. Um, and see the landscapes more than seeing the actual, um, like buildings or sites there. Um, so yeah, so maybe that's not uh, the normal touristic route. So that's actually more fun sometimes, I think. So that's pretty cool. Um, sometimes I also like to be a tourist in my own city. So do some of the, do the opposite. Do some of the touristy things that when you live in a city, you don't normally do because um, you've been living there. So it feels normal to you. Um, so it's kind of fun to go on those tours or, um, you know, walk around the city and pretend like you're seeing it for the first time and, and learn some new things about it. So in my opinion, I don't know about you, but, um, but anyways, okay. So you did so great today. We learned some new words. I hope that you can practice that V sound with visitor. Um, and also, uh, one more time, let's do the pronunciation conquer. Conquer. Excellent. Yeah, you got it down. All right. Um, and we learned some new words like overgrown and abandoned. Um, and you did a great job. Lots of reading today because you were the only one. So thank you for being. Um, thank you for being a good sport with that. Um, do you have any questions before we end class? Nope. I I had a great time. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Anton. It was a pleasure having you. I'm so glad that you came today. Um, and I hope to see you for another class this week. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. You have a good night. And uh, tomorrow's Friday, so enjoy yourself. Have a great weekend, okay? Okay. Goodbye. Bye, Sounds Anton. Good.